Daf Yomi, Tractate, Bava Batsia, page 106. Um, A, top of the page, the words my, uh, Zera, Acher, my, etc. <clears throat> what is the halacha? If, if the surrounding fields were planted with a different type of seed, what is the halacha? Likewise, is wheat in relation to barley considered like different types of seed or not? Furthermore, if the entire world, in other words, all the surrounding fields, were blighted by wind blasts and his was affected by mildew, or alternatively, if the fields of the entire world were struck by mildew and his were blighted with wind blasts, what is the halakha? The Gemara responds, no resolution is found to any of these lemmas, and the lemmas shall stand unresolved. And right away, we have the th- immediately the 152nd teku. We just had, wow, interesting. Two tekus very close to each other. Okay. The Gemara poses another question. If the owner said to the tenant farmer, plant the field with wheat, and he went and planted it with barley, and most of the valley was wind blasted, and these fields with barley of his were so wind blasted, what is the halakha? Do we say that the tenant farmer can say to him, even if I had planted it with wheat, it would likewise have been wind blasted? As all the surrounding fields suffered the same fate, or perhaps the owner can say to him, had you planted it with wheat, the following verse would have been fulfilled for me, and you shall decree a matter and it will be established for you. And the light shall shine upon your ways. Job twenty two twenty eight. Since you might have merited greater success by following my wishes. Okay. <clears throat> the Gemara responds. It stands to reason that the owner can say to him, "Had you planted it with wheat." It would have fulfilled for me this verse, and you shall decree a matter, and it will be established for you. The light shall shine upon your ways. But tigzar mar v'yakum lacha v'yakum lach v'al derechecha noga or. Okay. Let's continue. The Gemara presents another question. If all the fields of the owner of the land were wind blasted, and this one was also wind blasted with them, but the majority of the valley was not wind blasted, what is the halakha? Do we say that since the majority of the valley was not of the valley was not wind blasted, the tenant farmer does not subtract? For the owner, the amount owed his tenancy. I rolled a nine. As it is not a regional disaster, perhaps could claim, could one claim since all the lands of the owner were wind blasted, the tenant can say to the owner, 
This happened due to your bad fortune, as all your fields were wind blasted. Okay. Um, let's continue. More light. Oh. Wow. Okay. Now I'll just keep like this. Wow. Anyway. Um. The Gemara responds to stands to reason that the owner can say to the tenant if, if it was due to my bad fortune a little would have been left for me as it is written for we are left but a few from many Jeremiah 42 verse 2 which indicates that even one suffering from misfortune does not lose all that he has we more discuss a similar case. If all the fields of the tenant farmer were wind blasted and most of the valley was wind blasted, and this field was also wind blasted with them, what is the halakha? Do we say that since most of the valley was wind blasted, the tenant farmer subtracts for the owner the amount owed for his tenancy? And does not pay, or perhaps since all the tenants' lands were wind blasted, the owner can say to the tenant, "The damage is due to your bad misfortune, your bad fortune, and all your fields were wind blasted." The owner responds, "It stands to reason that the owner can say to him, it occurred due to your bad fortune.'" Moore asks, why should this be so? Here too, let us say to the owner, if it was due to my bad fortune, a little would have been left for me, as the following verse would have been fulfilled for me. For we are left, but a few from many. The more answer is, this is not a valid claim, because the owner can say to the tenant, had you been worthy of something, being left for you, it would have been left from your own private land, not the fields you paid to cultivate. Okay. The more raised an objection from Mishnah to the ruling that if there is a regional disaster, the cultivator subtracts from the produce he owes as part of his tenancy. The halacha is that if one sells his field in Eretz Yisrael in a time when the halacha or the jubilee year are in effect, he does not have the right to purchase it from the buyer until two years have passed. The Mishnah teaches in Arachin 29b if it was a year of wind blasted crops or mildew, or it was the sabbatical year, or if those years were like the years of Elijah, in which no rain fell. See Kings, First Kings seventeen one, and eighteen one and two. <clears throat> they do not count as part of his tally of years before he may repurchase his land. The Gemara analyzes the Mishnah. This Tana teaches that the cases of wind blasts and mildew are similar to the case where the years were like the years of Elijah, just as the years of Elijah is referring to a time when there was no produce at all, so to hear wind blasts and mildew are referring to cases where there was no produce at all. But, but by inference, one can learn that if there was some produce, it counts towards his tally of years before he may repurchase his land and we do not say that it is a regional disaster. 
The Gemara answers with Nachman Bar Yitzchak said, there the case with regard to the sold field is different. As the verse states with regard to the sale and leasing of fields, according to the numbers of years of the crops, he shall sell to you. Leviticus 25, 15, which is referring to years in which there is produce harvested in the world. Rav Ashi says to Rav Kahana, if that is so, the sabbatical year should count for him as part of his tally of years, as at least there is produce outside of Eretz Israel. Rav Kahana said to him, the sabbatical year is an abrogation of the king, in other words, God. Therefore, it should not be included in the number of the years before land is repurchased. Marazutra, son of Mari, said to Ravina, if that is so, that the sabbatical year is entirely disregarded, then in the case of one who consecrates his field and wants to redeem it, the sabbatical year should not count for him for the deduction of the price of the field when it was redeemed. Why did we learn in a mission at Arachim 25a that the one who consecrated his field gives a selah and a pundion coin, which is worth 16 prutot, to the temple treasury for each year remaining until the jubilee year, including the sabbatical year, in accordance with the payment prescribed by the Torah? See Leviticus 27, 16 through 19. The amount to be paid per year, which is 50 shekels divided by the years remaining until the Jubilee year, should not take the upcoming sabbatical years into account. Ravina said to him, There it is different as it is suitable for laying out produce on it. Although one may not plant the field during the sabbatical year, one may use it for other purposes. Shmuel said they taught the halacha that if there is a regional disaster, the cultivator subtracts from the produce he owes as part of his tenancy, only if the tenant planted the field and sprouted and it sprouted and then grasshoppers consumed it or if he planted it with different seed but if he did not plant it at all the tenant is not entitled to subtract from the amount he owes even if there was a regional disaster this is because the owner can say to him had you planted it, perhaps my merit would have prevented the field from being affected by the epidemic. And the following verse would have fulfilled, been fulfilled for me. They will not be ashamed. They will not be ashamed in the time of evil. And in the days of famine, they shall be satisfied. Psalms thirty-seven nineteen. 19. Rav Sheshit raises an objection from Brighton. In the case of a shepherd who was hurting the animals of others and he left his flock and came to the town and in the meantime a wolf came and tore an animal to pieces or a lion came and trampled one of the flock. We do not say definitively that had he been there he would have been rescued. He would have rescued them and therefore he is liable to due to his absence. Rather, the court estimates with regard to him if he could have rescued his animal by chasing a beast of this kind away, he is liable as his departure from the scene was certainly a contributing factor due to the damage. If not, he is exempt from liability. According to Shmuel's opinion, 
Why is the shepherd exempt from liability? Let the owner say to him, Had you been there, the following verse would have been fulfilled for me. Your servants smote both the lion and the bear. 1 Samuel 17.36 The Gemara answers, This is because the shepherd could say to the owner, If you were worthy of a miracle occurring to you, a, mir- a miracle would have indeed occurred to you, as it did to Rechonin ben Dosa when his goats brought bears and paled on their horns without any assistance on the part of a shepherd. See Ta'anit 25a. The Gemara asks, and let the, the owner say to him, Granted that I was not worthy of a great miracle, but of a small miracle, I was worthy. The Gemara concludes, indeed, this is difficult.